Salman moved to the to the man of Nasiyibin. Salman found the man and stayed with him for a while. The same story repeated itself. Death approached, and before he died, Salman came to the man and asked for his advice to whom and where to go. The man recommended that Salman join another man on the same religion in Am Amuriya. Salman moved to Am Amuriya after his friend died. He found his new reference and joined him on, on his religion. Salman worked and earned some cows and one sheep. Uh, Dr. Salah comments and says the good and lawful way of earning is very important to the believer certainly the influence of money of money is great many have sold themselves and their principles for a cheap price many turn hypocrites for the sake of money many however can stand up for the truth regardless of what they may lose this brings the peace of heart and mind <clears throat> here's the big move so death approached the man of Amoriya, Salman repeated his requests. The answer was different. The man said, O son, I don't know of anyone who is on the same religion as we are. However, the time of emergence of a prophet will shade you. This prophet is on the same religion of Ibrahim. Abraham. So, just to clarify, uh, Nasibin is a city on the road between Mosul and Sham. And Am Amamuridiyah is a town that was part of the Roman Empire in the eastern region of the Roman Empire. Uh, Dr. Saleh continues, The bishop knew the path of Abraham. It is their origin of monotheism. It calls for the worship of Allah alone. The bishop knew well the recommendation of Abraham to his children. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the translation of the meaning, And this submission to Allah in Islam was enjoined by Ibrahim. Abraham upon his sons and so did Jacob saying oh my sons Allah has chosen for you the true religion that die, then die not except on the faith of Islam this is in surah 2 ayah 132 so Ibrahim or Abraham married uh, Sarah or Sarah and Hagar from Sarah's side he had the following progeny Isaac Jacob Joseph David Solomon Moses and Jesus peace be upon them all from his union with Hagar, he had Ishmael and Muhammad, peace be upon them. Ishmael was raised in Bakka, known also as Mecca in Arabia. Muhammad was from the descendants of Ishmael. The man knew that the faith of Abraham is to be followed. He must have read the promise of Allah to bring a great nation from Ishmael's side. Uh, referenced in Genesis, in the Bible, Genesis 21.18. And he recommended to Salman the prophet from the descendants of Ishmael, who submits to Allah and follows the path of Abraham. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the translation of the meanings, Our Rabb, send amongst them a messenger of their own who shall recite unto them your verses and instruct them in this book, this Quran, in al-hikmah, full knowledge of Allah's laws. Or ju jurisprudence or wisdom of prophethood, etc. And sanctify them. You are the Almighty, the All-Wise. In Surah 2, Ayah 129. Allah SWT says in translation of the meanings, Then we have inspired you, O Muhammad Sallallahu saying, Follow the religion of Ibrahim, Abraham, Hanifan, meaning Islamic monotheism to worship none but Allah. And he was not of the mushrikeen, he was not of the polytheists, pagans, idolaters, disbelievers in the oneness of Allah and his messengers. Those who worship others along with Allah or set up rivals or partners to Allah, etc. Surah 16, Ayah 123. And Allah SWT says in the translation of the meanings, Verily, among mankind who have the best claim to Abraham are those who followed him, and this Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and those who have believed Muslim, those who have believed, meaning the Muslims. And Allah is the Wali, protector and helper of the believers. Surah 3, Ayah 68. So the man said, describing this Prophet, He is sent with the same religion as that of Abraham. He comes from Arabia and migrates to a place located between landscapes of black stones as if burned by fire. Palm trees spread between these scopes. He has certain well-known signs. He accepts and eats from the food gift, and he does not eat from charity. This, this is important, so remember this. He does not eat from charity. The seal of prophethood is between his shoulders. If you could move to that land, then do so. 
So comparing the descriptions, Dr. Saleh, rahimahullah, he comments on this. He says, the men knew about the coming of the Prophet from Arabia from the brethren of the Israelites. And Deuteronomy 18, verses 17 to 18 are quoted. I will raise them up, a prophet from among their brethren, like unto Moses, like unto thee, meaning Moses. And will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Certainly this was not about Jesus as Paul tried to interpret it. In Acts uh, chapter 13, verse 22-23. Because Jesus was neither of the descendants of Ishmael or of the brethren Israelites, being an Israelite himself. The man knew about God's revelation coming from Tima, north of the city of Medina in Arabia. According to J. Hastings' Dictionary of the Bible, and the Holy One coming from Paran. According to Genesis 21-21, the wilderness of Paran was the place where Prophet Ishmael settled and had twelve children, amongst them Kedar, the second son of Ishmael. In Isaiah 40, uh, chapter 42, verse 1 to 13, the, the beloved of God is linked to the descendants of Kedar, the ancestor of the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. When the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam called the people in Mecca to submit to Allah, most of them refused and they plotted to kill the Prophet. He was commanded by Allah to migrate with those who accepted Islam to the city of Medina. Soon a battle between the few and ill-armed represented by Muhammad Sallallahu and his followers and the pagans from Mecca took place in Badr a, few, a year after the Prophet's migration. The Prophet and his companions were victorious. Isaiah 21, 13-17 the, the man knew that Jesus السلام, informed of the coming of Prophet Ahmad, same as Muhammad Sallallahu This was the glad tidings which Allah spoke about on the tongue of Jesus. Allah says in the translation of the meanings, And remember when Jesus, son of Mary, said, O children of Israel, I am the messenger of Allah unto you, confirming the Torah which came before me, and giving glad tidings of a messenger to come after me, whose name shall be Ahmad. Surah 61, Ayah 6. So the man died. Salman's continuing his uh, narration. Sal the man died. Salman stayed in Amamuriyya until one day some merchants from the tribe of Kalb passed by me. Salman said, I told them, take me to Arabia and I will give you my cows and the only sheep I have. They said, okay. Salman gave them what he offered and they took him with them. When they reached Wadi Al-Kurra close to Medina, they sold him as a slave to a Jew. Salman stayed with the Jew. He saw the palm trees. I hope this would be the same place described by my friend. Salman said, <clears throat> So a man who was the first cousin to Salman's master and belonged to the Jewish tribe of Bani Quraidah in Medina came visiting one day. He bought Salman from his Jewish master. He took me with him to Medina. By Allah, when I saw it, I knew it, based upon what my friend had described. Then Allah sent his messenger, meaning Muhammad Sallallahu He stayed in Mecca as long as he did. I did not hear anything about him because I was very much busy with the work of slavery. He then migrated to Medina. Salman continued saying, I was one day on a palm tree on top of one of its adak, date clusters doing some work for my master. A first cousin of his came and stood in front of him. His master was sitting and said, Woe to Bani Kila, people of the tribe Kila. They are gathered in Kibba, around a man who came today from Mecca, claiming that he was a prophet. When I heard that, meaning when Salman heard that, he shivered. He, I shivered, thinking that I was about to fall down on my master. I came down and I said, what did you say? What did you say? My master became angry and punched me with a powerful punch and said, what kind of business do you have in this matter? Go mind your business. I said, nothing. I just wanted to be sure of what he was saying. On that evening, I went to see the messenger of Allah while he was in Kibba. I took with me something I had saved. I went in and said, I was told you were a righteous man and that your company, who are strangers here, are in need. And I want to offer you something. I saved his charity. I found that you deserve it more than anyone else. 
Salman said, I offered it to him, and he said to his companions, Eat, and he kept his hand off, meaning he did not eat. I said to myself, This is one of the signs of his prophethood. Following this encounter with the Prophet ﷺ, Salman left to prepare for another test. This time he brought a gift and visited the Prophet ﷺ in Medina. And Salman said, I saw that you did not eat from the charity. Here is a gift that, wanted, that I wanted to honor you with. The Prophet ﷺ, he ate from it and ordered his companions to do the same which they did. I said to myself, now they are two, meaning two of the Prophet's signs have come true. On the third encounter, Salman came to... Bakiya al Gharqad, the burial site of the Prophet's companions, where the Prophet ﷺ was sharing in a funeral of one of his companions. 